It's been amazing to see the flood of love and support from our friends here on the island. With one phone call, she was there and she spent the entire time at the hospital with me, helping me through all of that. All of the kids have been just showing an outpouring of love and support for Caleb. Caleb had a seizure. He does not have a history of seizures, and so it was a big surprise and very scary for him and for us. What happened was it was a few days ago, and I had put the three younger kids to bed, I checked on them, they were all asleep, and I was out in the kitchen cleaning the kitchen, and I heard an odd noise. And then I heard it again. And I asked the kids, I was like, what is that noise? And he said, it's Caleb. So I walked into his room to check on him and I immediately knew that something was wrong. I flipped on the lights and he was laying on his bed in a seizure. And while Caleb has never had seizures before, I have seen seizures before and I immediately recognized what it was. And I called to him, Caleb, and I knew he needed help. So I ran out of the room and grabbed my phone and as I was coming back in, the seizure stopped. I'm so grateful that it was not very long and um, he was still laying there. He wasn't responding to us. He couldn't talk and his body was still stiff. I scooped him up in my arms and um, called for help. Jeremy was out of town so a friend came to help me with the kids and I took Caleb to the emergency room. They did a CAT scan and some blood work and everything came back normal. So um, they sent us home to follow up with his pediatrician, which we did. We have followed up with her and he had another seizure. So we are continuing on this path of trying to figure out what is going on. We're working with doctors here on the island in Puerto Rico and we're working with doctors in Kansas City because we still have connections there and so we're working in unison with both of them. We're really, really lucky that an opening for an EEG came up. Basically, he's going to have wires covering his head and they are going to pick up the electrical activity of his brain for 24 hours. They're gonna be monitoring it and see what we can learn from that. So that's what we're doing. Waiting rooms are always so cold and we did not bring jackets. I had us both wear long pants, so that's a step in the right direction. Caleb's got some gack he's playing with to pass the time. Waiting room fun. Kind of fun. Our waiting room's not your jam. We've resorted to cuddling and I'm okay with that. So Caleb's doing a paint by sticker book. My kids have really been enjoying this Christmas one and I brought a book for me. You just never know how long you're gonna be in an office and I'm reading a Christmas book that I'm really into right now. Here's our instructions. Caleb, how many cables are they putting on your head? 24. And they're gonna use a glue and some tape so they're gonna stay on there. And what's the number one rule? Don't touch your head. Yeah. 21 more to go. 21 more to go. Your hair kind of hides that one. Is it cold or is it just it fine? Well, it's cold. Yeah, the glue's a little cold. Not just, I'm surprised how many cables there are. Yeah, we thought there were just gonna be a couple. Yeah, we thought there were gonna be like four. And then we had to plus that by 20 to actually get the right answer. Yeah, 24. It's easier if you're bald. It probably would be easier if you were bald. At least you have short hair. It must be hard for people with longer hair. So all these cables are gonna plug into this box. How do I carry it around? I think they give you a cool little bag. I'm at the last one. Oh, that one doesn't even go on your head. Mm -hmm. It goes on your chest. Looks like you have really cool, colorful hair. Yeah. Like we should braid your hair back there. Okay, with your brain activity is all going into that box. It should read my um, thoughts, right? It doesn't read your thoughts. It reads your brain's electrical activity. It would be super cool if we could just collect all of your thoughts. <laughs> so they're gluing them down, which makes me feel better about them not falling off since you're a little bit of an active guy. <laughs> Caleb's having fun messing with the machine because every sound and move he makes affects the machine. <laughs> It's a good thing we don't have that recording with us all day. He's putting your colorful wire hair into a ponytail. The setup is complete. He's got a little bag that all the wires go into. Mm -hmm. Give us a little slow turn so we can see all the wires on your head. So for 24 hours, 
he has these wires on his head and the wires go into the little machine and record the electrical activity in his brain. As we were walking out of the office, we saw another little boy pretty close to Caleb's age with an EEG hooked up to his head. And I think it just really helps kids to know that they're not alone. They're not the only ones experiencing this. I'm not the only mother experiencing this with my child. It's an important thing to know in life. You're not the only one wearing this get up today. So how are we doing? This has been hard. Walking into Caleb's bedroom and seeing him have a seizure was terrifying. I felt powerless and scared and it was just really, really hard. It was hard that Jeremy was gone when this all happened and it was a really hard experience for Caleb. I didn't know that when you have a seizure, you can be aware and hear and he could hear me, but he could not respond and that terrified him. I, I can't imagine how scary that would be. I know how scary it was on my end to not be able to have him responding. So I think we're doing our best. I think we're tired, we're overwhelmed, we're scared but we are relying on our friends and our family and our doctors. We are going to do whatever we need to for Caleb to be healthy. And we're working with doctors here and doctors in Kansas City. There's a chance we might go back to Kansas City to have some appointments there. There's a chance we might stay here. So we just don't know exactly what the future holds, maybe more testing, maybe medications, but we're gonna do whatever we need to do. It's been amazing to see the flood of love and support from our friends here on the island. With Jeremy being gone, I needed help and these friends rallied. My friend came and stayed the night with our kids. Another friend met me at the emergency room. She, she speaks Spanish fluently and with one phone call, she was there and she spent the entire time at the hospital with me, helping me through all of that. Another friend the next morning, 6.45 a.m., showed up at my door. I didn't even know that I needed her help, but she came and I needed her help. Caleb and I had gotten back from the hospital at 4 a.m., so he was finally asleep. And she got all my four other kids ready and took them to school, took Janae to another friend's house to stay for the day. Seriously, people fed and cared for and drove my kids around all day. And I am so grateful for the amazingly wonderful people in this world. We haven't found a cause yet for these seizures. A lot of seizures are idiopathic and that means you don't know the cause for them. And that's where epilepsy comes into play as a possible future diagnosis that they're looking at. Like I said, we don't know what is ahead, um, but we're gonna do everything we can to figure this out and take the best care of Caleb that we can. In the midst of it, there's, it's scary but there's a lot of good. So we can't choose to only see the scary. We have to keep our eyes open for the good as well. I'm going through right now and editing the video and then there was one piece of the story that I really wanted to remember and to share. And that's that Isaac and Elise were so tender and loving to Caleb through this experience. They actually wrote notes to him and put it in his bag as they were packing for him as he was getting ready to be rushed off to the emergency room. All of the kids have been just showing an outpouring of love and support for Caleb. I just wanted to throw that in. We can get back now to the rest of the vlog. I want to watch a movie. Okay, you, you can watch, watch the, the movie. Grinch stole Christmas? Yeah. Lisi and Laura both wore green today in honor of I tried Grinch to do day. a lot of green. I don't have much green. Yeah, I wore a lot work. of green. Dun, dun, no. dun. <laughs> Caleb, how are the wires doing? Good. I like wires. You like the wires? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been very impressed. Caleb has had times where he's wanted to itch today and wanted to touch it and he hasn't. He's been very disciplined and proud of it. Because one of the rules Bye. is don't touch your head. I just feel normal except for sometimes I'm a little itchy or I just feel stuff on my head. So Caleb, you had a friend come over today yeah. to play with you. You've been doing a lot of drawing, yeah. board games. Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of Caleb. It is not an easy thing to do and he's done a really great job today with all those wires attached to his head. Tonight is our annual Grinch night. We are eating roast beast and hoo hash, which we just call that potatoes because I don't know what it is for real. We're gonna eat lime jello because it's green and then we're gonna read How the Grinch Stole Christmas and we're gonna watch How the Grinch Stole Christmas. We've done this for several years and it kind of accidentally has become a tradition and I love it because it's super easy. Read a book, watch a movie, eat food. That's my kind of a tradition. Fingers nervously drumming, I must find 
some way to stop Christmas from coming. And then, oh the noise, oh the noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's young and old would sit down to a feast and they'd feast. And they'd feast. And they'd feast, 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 feast. He stared down at Whoville, the Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming, it came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And he puzzled three hours, hmm, till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something that he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. So we're getting ready for bed, and Laura asked me the cutest question. She said, Mom, what did they do in the olden days on Grinch Day? And I was like, what are you talking about? And she said, you know, we know what they used to do on Christmas is a long time ago. What, what did they do on Grinch days a long time ago? And I'm like, oh, you're so sweet, honey. Grinch day is not a real thing. It's just something that we do at our house. And it's just, kids are cute. They ask cute questions. Merkosh. So Caleb gets to sleep with these wires on his head tonight. And we are having him sleep in a cot on our room so that we can keep close eye on him. How are you feeling? Good. Are you ready to get these things off tomorrow morning? Yes. Yes, you've been such a good sport about it. Can you tell us good night? Yeah. Good night, Jay House out. A present! A present! Mm -hmm.